What is going on guys? In this video, I want to talk to you about business logic. Uh, this is a term that you hear about a lot in the software industry and sometimes it just goes right over your head if you've never heard of it before. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about what business logic is and I'm going to explain it to you through just a practical example that everyone can understand. Um, so first of all, what is business logic? Why is it something that even matters? So I'll read off now the technical definition for you here and then I'll give you kind of a simplified version of it as I understand it. Uh, so according to Wikipedia, business logic or domain logic is the part of the program that encodes the real world business rules that determine how data can be created, stored and changed. So the real world business rules of your program and how data can be basically moved around, changed, modified, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so that's the technical definition. The way that I like to think of business logic is it's kind of like the way you model your entities in relation to the business problem that you're trying to solve. And there may be constraints that you need to place on your model through policies or other mechanisms that kind of conform to the business requirements. Uh, so like I said, the way I like to think about this is it's the way that you model your entities in your, your space, in your domain, and you'll also include rules that apply to your domain objects that reflect business requirements. That's kind of how I define it, how I understand it. Um, so what's a, like a very trivial example of this? So I'm going to give you a basic one, then we're going to walk through a more complicated one. So think of a app that would need to manage like takeout food for a restaurant and it wants to kind of compile orders and charge the customer. Um, so what are the entities in this problem? Well, you probably have some concept of an order and then within that entity, you may have items and then a quantity of items and each item costs an amount and the order total is the sum of all those amounts times some figure that says this is how much tax you have to pay and you know you have policies which are tax must be applied at a certain point in the order and this is kind of business logic this is exactly what it is um, so that was a very trivial example. Let's look at something more in detail here. So I kind of came up with this hypothetical example here and I called it the uh, Pacific Shipping Company. And let's say I have this shipping company and uh, I have these ports that are located at different uh, junctions in the world. So maybe port A is over here, port B is over here, and port C is over here. So these are all different ports. So in this domain, in this business problem, we obviously have ports. So these are port objects, and they likely have characteristics associated with them, such as, I don't know, longitude, latitude, name, uh, address, all that kind of stuff. And within this system, our job is to represent uh, sequences of routes that some system generates so that it can kind of go between these different ports, pick things up, drop things off, et cetera, et cetera. So our job is to kind of uh, maintain this, this logic, right? So how can we represent that? Well, we have a concept of ports and then we know we have like some kind of vessel or something like that. And this vessel will need to go in this case, maybe from A to B and then from B to C. So how can we represent this concept in our system? Well, obviously we're gonna need some concept of a vessel, but this concept here, what is this called? Well, you can call it maybe a route. I would say it's called an itinerary because a route is an expectation. An itinerary is what you will actually be doing. And each itinerary has a list of, what do they have? Stops, right? And your stops contain details. And in this case, your stops may contain information on the source port. So the source port in this example would be A. And then your destination for stop one would be B. So you kind of have this unit here, which is S1. And then you go from B to C. So your source would be B and your destination would be C. So maybe this is called S2. So you have two stops here. So this is business logic here. So we are creating a representation of our model through kind of this encoding. Now, what if we come along and say business wants to apply some kind of policy that says uh, whenever you construct an itinerary, no matter where the vessel goes, it always needs to come back home. Well, that's a policy, right? So that is now saying that in order for this itinerary to be to exist and be valid, you must always add a return stop that goes back to your original kind of departure location. So that's an example of a policy or a business rule in this example where you're employing this kind of rule that applies to how your, your data is constructed. 
So this is what business logic is. If you enjoyed this video, I have another great one on technical debt that you should check out. Uh, and as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.